Hey everybody, Happy New Year. This is Aaron Collins, Drone Pilot. Thank you for coming back. Today's got a, a pretty uneventful but uh, successful installation on my 2014 Hobie uh, Outback kayak. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the content. Saturday one of the two and uh, unfortunately five days shipping now during the holidays doesn't mean five days shipping so uh, today what I've done is I've, uh, I'm gonna put together a video uh, on how to build your own rod holder for your kayak and today we'll be putting it on my 2014 Hobie uh, Outback with Mirage Drive and uh, I've built another one for um, my wilderness systems Yak Attack um, 115. Um, it's going to be a pretty similar process to this one. As a matter of fact, I've already done several things necessary to put it together, but what I'm going to outline is all of the parts that you're going to need, sizes, dimensions, diameters, and all that good stuff. So stay tuned. Alright, this is what it looks like assembled. Okay. Now this is not finished. I still have to adjust wherever I want these trolling arms and also the heights of these rears and I still have to shape the caps or the end pieces of the pipes themselves which I'll show you how to do that too. So I want to show you the uh, placement of the seat as well as to why it's that high. Okay. Uh, so that pretty much everything's over my head or, or right about as I turn around. That's just kind of how I prefer it to be. Um, that's pretty much the way it's going to sit. And also you can see the large amount of room I have to put things in the back and access the back or the rear tank well. In between that space. That's, I'd say that's a good foot there. It makes it really easy to reach just behind your back and grab this thing. Now, if I'm going to do some uh, piling fishings, fishing up under the bridge or something, this is probably not the ideal setup because, you know, the rods are going to be into the bridge. So, here's the breakdown of what I have. Now, this is going to vary depending on how wide your kayak is as to how much exactly of these spacers that you need. Okay. As you can see here, I've got everything labeled. What I bought was a 10 foot stick of Schedule 40 PVC. It's one and a half inch. However, if you look, if you actually measure it, the outside dimension is about one and seven eighths. Okay. So, but it'll be listed as one and a half inch PVC. So, as you can see here, I have all of the links on all the every all the little pieces that I needed. Pretty much all the pieces that hold the rods are all 12 inches long, okay, all the way around. So we need two 45s, okay, one here for that outrigger that I have, another over here, okay, and you have two 90s, one there and one across here, okay, and you have one, two, three, four, five T's, okay. Now two of the T's go down into the kite themselves here. And that is the molded piece that you have to do, which I'll show you how to do that as well. And you have one, two, three, four, five, 12 inch pieces. Okay. So if you're like me and you drive a car, what I did was I cut most of this in the, in the, um, the lows, my local lows. 
I basically went ahead and cut five feet off of it of the 10 foot stick and so that it fit actually in my car so and you can use those for the rod holes and if, and if you you know don't want them that long I like them a little long I have um, you know I use spinning reels and they have a really long butt on the rod and I kind of like them to sit all the way down in there okay well this is what the exploded version looks like along with the 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 increments of the pipe that you need to cut if your kayak is the same as mine okay so let's talk a little bit about putting the pieces into the existing rod holders in the Hobie okay so essentially what I did was I said alright I'm comfortable with this amount of distance which is four and a half inches going down in here okay and all I did was I made a mark this red line around this pipe when it was straight okay all I did was I took my time and I heated this up with my ten dollar Harbor Freight heat gun okay I heated it up until I actually would grab it and it starts feeling a little flimsy right here on the front and all you do is you take it and you start working it in the hole you start turning it and turning it and turning it and turning it and then you keep wiggling some more and as it cools down when it gets into to the to the hole of the kayak like here right now it was 30 degrees last night when I was working on it it's going to be cooling down pretty rapidly which is actually a good thing because you can get it too hot to where it just gets so flimsy that you can't push it down in there anymore so that's uh you know something to think about is to not get it too hot you know to the point to where it has no rigidity to it so anyway you keep working it down in there down in there and then basically this red line I have lined up with the top of the hole here that's that four and a half inch mark so when you're done making that you know making this thing fit into the existing rod holder okay the next thing you're going to realize is that the pipe is coming out of here at the wrong angle. You want it to take more of a vertical shot up, okay? Um, and how you're going to do that is essentially this mark that you made, this four and a half inch mark that you made, you're going to heat up about two inches above that mark. So you'll take this pipe out, okay? Or, I mean, you can leave it in there. It's perfectly fine to leave it in there. Uh, just be mindful that you're using a heat gun and anything that might be uh, directly in the way bungees plastic it's going to heat that stuff up too so so essentially I just needed up to two inches right and when I started telling being able to tell that it started getting a little bit more pliable you know then all you do is you bend it to the desired angle that you want coming up right now uh, I would recommend keeping a wet towel on hand because what you're going to notice is if you don't have anything to kind of quench it pretty quickly is that it's going to stay rubbery for a little bit longer and it's not going to get exactly what you want out of it so I I was you know, fortunate to do it in 30 degree weather last night I just dunked a towel into uh, a cold bucket of water and then I put it on there and it's and it's almost instant that this thing starts to harden up then you can remove it and and quench it kind of in a bucket you know and that pretty much seals the deal on the angle of this pipe all right so as you can see you have about four inches or you know three and a half more or less inches right here that are really contoured in for the rod holder and you have another raised section here all right now so what i was going for with this is i pretty much wanted the angle of this pipe to be pretty much straight up behind the seat there right so clearance wise I think the seats actually slid back a little bit here I'll have it positioned properly here but so it's gonna be behind the seat and you know I got about four inches behind the seat there but essentially this piece you want to be coming straight up you know if you envision the the top of this kayak is a flat plane you want it pretty much vertical to it as you can see from the back it is pretty much it, it leans a little bit out I guess it's but it's pretty straight for the most part okay
it sits about you know three four inches outside of the outside of the seat there and you know the thing is that you need to think about when you're doing this too um, this is the second one I've done I'm by no means a professional at doing this however just know that if you don't get the angle just right the first time it's okay because you can just reheat it and move it to where you want it you know but essentially you want both of them to pretty much more or less match but if they don't um, that's kind of why I have some I think a little bit odd lengths of these pipes here is because those angles may not be exactly the same here and there so you know they're pretty close but not exact okay two things you're gonna need you're gonna need some of this CPVC or PVC purple primer okay and you're gonna need some of the all-purpose cement or any kind of cement you know for PVC CPVC and ABS okay this is just happens to be a multi-purpose okay now something that I learned uh, when building the first one is that if you really want the paint to stick you should take some of your primer and coat the pipes that you're working with with it okay here is the one for my wilderness systems kayak okay and I've been using this for I don't know maybe six months or so and using that um, primer seems to have done the trick I have no you know chipping paint or anything like that there's obviously some some hard knocks where it's been thrown around and put in the back of the car but for the most part it holds up really really nice okay so as discussed we you really want to put the primer all over you know your pipe but more importantly where the joints are you know when you're when you're ready to put it together which I'm not at this point in the video um, you want to clean these pipes off really nicely okay and you're just gonna spread primer you know about an inch because that's what it goes into the joint is about an inch you know there's a little seat down in here that you can see that's where the pipes go into so you want to put the purple primer on the inside of this pipe and an inch of this pipe an inch of that side same with each additional joint that you're doing okay and the same places that you're putting your primer you want to put your rubber cement now unless you're fully ready for that thing to be stuck for good I don't recommend putting any rubber cement on there okay make sure that the angles and everything that you have is exactly what you want because it takes about 30 seconds and it's pretty set so keep that in mind when you're putting it together uh, I'm not ready to put mine together just yet um, I'm still waiting for the seat here like I said at the beginning of the video the parts that I need for this seat to be installed um, are not here yet so it'll be a continuation and I will probably be putting the um, the rod holder together when I do finalize the seat so but if you're wondering this is a um, obviously it's a Vibe Hero seat uh, you can get them on Vibe Kayaks for $99 I think and I have some parts ordered which are about 99 cents a piece uh, and I basically go on to say that um, I can do this whole seat for 110 bucks under 110 which shipping and handling of 750 so you know when those parts get here we'll uh, finish that up so that's gonna do it for this video guys uh, I really appreciate you uh, tuning in and uh, checking my channel out and uh, I would really appreciate it if you would like, subscribe, uh, leave a comment. Uh, and like I said, I really appreciate your support. So uh, I'm going to keep the videos coming, you know, keep visiting the page. And uh, we're going to keep on trying to produce some new content. Thanks.